Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining us today. We are here to talk about Giving Tuesday. Uh, it's exciting to be talking about Giving Tuesday, also maybe a little overwhelming to already be talking about a December fundraising campaign since we're just here in the middle of July. But time moves fast, especially in the nonprofit world where you've got a ton of different things going on, maybe a small staff. So it's a great time to really start thinking about your Giving Tuesday campaign today, start planning for it, and that will allow you the opportunity to really get the most out of Giving Tuesday and hopefully not feel like come Thanksgiving time, you're scrambling to put some emails together, get your page together, and get your campaign up and running. So really, we're here to give everyone, hopefully, the motivation and some steps you can take today to really get started with Giving Tuesday. So uh, for anyone that just joined us, um, you can always ask a question at any time on the GoToWebinar control panel on the side of your screen. And we will also be recording the presentation, so uh, you can feel free to kick back and relax, no need to take notes. You'll be able to grab the recording and go through it later at your leisure and or share with any colleagues. So hopefully most of you that are on the call today are familiar with Mighty Cause, but just in case, we have some new faces here. Uh, Mighty Cause is an online fundraising platform for nonprofits. We've been around since 2006, so lots of years of serving our nonprofit partners. We have a full suite of nonprofit software tools from peer-to-peer -to -peer fundraising to an embeddable donation page for your website to big major giving days like this, a CRM system, lots of really awesome tools for nonprofits, but we're here today to talk about Giving Tuesday. So many of you know every year the Giving Tuesday movement just gets bigger and bigger on a global scale. And last year, over 380 million was raised, over 3.6 million gifts total across the world. Uh, I think over 50 countries had Giving Tuesday campaigns going on all across uh, the United States. All 50 states had giving going on for Giving Tuesday. So it is a campaign that is here to stay. So it's really up to you as a nonprofit to think about the best way that you can take advantage of this movement, leverage the conversation that's happening around Giving Tuesday, to benefit your own fundraising efforts. On the Mighty Cause platform, each year we host our own Giving Tuesday campaign to bring together the nonprofit partners that use our platform on a year-round basis and give them an opportunity to prepare a focused Giving Tuesday campaign. Each year this event uh, is an exciting thing for our staff as well as our partner nonprofits. Last year, over $3.6 million was raised on the platform. We had over 900 nonprofits participate, 25,000 donors, and 250,000 in matching grants. That's a lot of giving that's happening on the Mighty Cause platform, and we really want your nonprofit to be a part of it. So you may ask yourself the question, why should I join Mighty Cause for Giving Tuesday? There are other platforms that you might be able to use. You might just think maybe I should just use the donate button I already have on my website. So I wanted to take a quick moment to give you some of the ideas of the benefits that come with our Giving Tuesday campaign. First and foremost, we've got really great fundraising tools. So that's everything from the ability to build a dynamic fundraising page with video content to customizing the donor experience when your donors are making their donation to peer-to-peer -to -peer fundraising tools that make it really easy for supporters to get involved and raise funds on your behalf really great tools to showcase matching grants that you have available all of those tools help to make fundraising easier and make it more engaging for your donors. On top of that, uh, with the Mighty Cause pricing guarantee that we have in place, you will pay, your nonprofit will pay less than you do for the cost of the PayPal button. 
We have great options for donors to cover the fees associated with the platform, but the guarantee that we have in place ensures that even if they don't, you will never pay more than 2.2% and 29 cents in aggregate for a disbursement that you receive from Mighty Cause. So that means that you can do all of your Giving Tuesday fundraising, get all those great tools, and pay less than you would if you had a PayPal button on your website. <laughs> on top of that, we are offering an extended free trial of all of our advanced features during the lead up to this year's Giving Tuesday campaign for organizations that are participating. So these features are typically $99 a month and we are giving them to our participants for free. So that's a great opportunity to test out our supporter CRM tool, uh, our advanced analytics, volunteer management, text to give, lots of really awesome features that can help you make the most of your fundraising typically $99 a month, and you'll get them for free by participating in uh, our Giving Tuesday campaign. And on top of that, like what we're doing here today and what we'll have going on from now through December, we've got lots of resources, trainings, templates. We want to make it easier for your nonprofit to host a successful Giving Tuesday campaign. So we're gonna be sharing all kinds of tips and tricks and resources from eBooks to downloadable guides, to email templates, to you know deeper dives on webinars like today. So lots of great resources that you all can take advantage of to make the most of your campaign and so that you don't have to start from scratch. So, now we're going to get into really the meat of what we came to talk about today, which is how you can get started planning your Giving Tuesday fundraising campaign. So we've outlined here for you, we'll go through our top 10 tips to get you started. The very first, and this is something that is always my number one uh, first step, no matter what campaign, no matter what you're doing, set a goal first. That goal, while it may seem like you don't want to slow down and take the time to really think through the goals, it's really important to take the time to do so to get everybody on the same page, whether it's your executive director, your board of directors, the team of volunteers that's going to be helping out. Make sure everybody's on the same page about what you're really trying to accomplish. Are you trying to raise a certain amount of money? Are you trying to get a certain number of unique donors to make a donation? Are you maybe trying to build up your recurring donor campaign? Or something that I suggest everybody consider for your um, Giving Tuesday goals, are you just looking to increase your donor retention? Giving Tuesday kicks off the end of the year giving campaign for many organizations. By December, if somebody hasn't made a donation to your organization this year, They've got a pretty short window to make that gift and to be retained for the year. And that's a huge uh, indicator of their uh, ongoing support and value to your organization. So there's lots of different things you can use to set goals. Um, really important to keep those smart. Um, and by that, you'll see all the, um, all the, you know, descriptions here of what makes your metrics smart, what makes your goal smart. Take a look at last year. Don't just say, we want to raise $50,000 because, well, we need to raise $50,000. That's great, but that might not be realistic. If you raised $10,000 last year, you're going to need a pretty, pretty strong, heavy campaign to increase from 10,000 to 50,000. But look at what you did last year. Look at what you need to do for the rest of the year in terms of meeting your goals, um, your fundraising budget for the year, and then work backwards to kind of find a set of goals that your team can agree on. And then that can really be something that you all can refer back to as you move throughout the campaign. Make sure you're staying focused on what is going to help us reach this goal. As an organization, that most likely has limited resources in terms of staff time and time to dedicate to a campaign like this, it's always helpful to be able to have 
kind of a, a checkpoint to say, is this idea that we had, it's going to take a lot of time and effort, is that going to help us meet this goal? If so, it's worth the time, let's do it. If not, it's not necessary, let's stay the course. So again, fairly simple concept, but something that can be done very soon here and a really important first step for everyone. So the next is setting a focus for your campaign. And by that, I mean, what specifically are you going to raise money for? Do you have a new program that you're launching? Is there a specific need within your organization? You know, replace an air conditioner unit at your shelter or, um, you know, something very structured like that? Or is it maybe more general, like a capital campaign or um, just general fundraising support? If it is something more general and you don't have a very focused, um, you know, a, a focused program that you're raising funds for, you'll want to create a focus in another way. So maybe you're not raising funds for one specific thing, but you can still highlight either an individual, a success story, a case study, an example of somebody that's been through your programming something that's going to make it personal for people. Obviously, donors are gonna be getting tons of emails, they'll be getting tons of asks for donations on Giving Tuesday. So you'll need something that's gonna make your campaign stand out. And general expenses just doesn't always excite most donors. So if that's what you need to raise funds for, you'll wanna make sure that you can really build a story around something else, an individual, a family, an animal, et cetera. So by narrowing that in today, now, this week, this month, you'll have time to create all kinds of uh, materials to support that key message, that key focus for your campaign. So whether you're gathering testimonials from uh, people that have been served by your programming, their families and friends, or just drafting the marketing copy that really effectively tells the story that you're trying to tell, gives you plenty of time to prepare a video or gather photo assets. All of that is going to, having all of that together is gonna to make it easy for you to create a coherent and cohesive campaign from your emails to social media, to your page, to your follow-up, all of that. If you take the time to get those assets together today, you'll have plenty so that when you go to create your emails or when you go to add a video to your page, for example, you have all of the assets ready and you're just plugging it into all the different ways that you're going to talk to your donors. <clears throat> Another really critical way to make your campaign stand out among the crowd in Giving Tuesday is by securing a matching grant. In preparing for this webinar, I looked back at the organizations that raised the most during our Giving Tuesday event last year on Mighty Cause. And without a doubt, almost all of the top 20 organizations had secured a matching grant for their campaign. And that's not a coincidence. A matching grant is just such an important way to increase the success of your campaign. Um, again, donors are gonna be getting tons of emails. So if they have $100 to give away on Giving Tuesday, and they know on your organization, if they make a donation, that $100 becomes 200, or another one that they've gotten an email from, there's no match, they're a lot more likely to make a donation to you because donors want to see their donation go further. They want to see the largest impact they can. So because it's only July, you've got plenty of time to build this into your strategy. So start thinking first about who might be a good matching donor for you. This could be a major donor that always makes a gift or typically makes a gift towards the end of the year. Reach out to that major donor and ask them if they would be willing to make that gift as a matching gift. And then you'll be able to make their traditional large gift go even further because you'll be able to leverage it for more support from your donors. Any corporate sponsors 
local corporate partners <clears throat> that you have a relationship with, you're trying to build a relationship with, this is a great opportunity for them because it's not just a donation to your organization. Because it's a match, it gives you plenty of opportunity to promote the donor that gave you that match. So it's a really good way for you to show some love and share who that corporate partner is that made that donation to support you. And uh, another option that every nonprofit should have available to them is board members. So every nonprofit has a board of directors that's supporting them. If you are having trouble finding matching grants from other sources, go to your board of directors. Perhaps they could each give a small donation that you pool together and that becomes your Giving Tuesday match. Or, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later, maybe one of your board members has a large donation left to meet their given debt goals for the year. They might be able to use that, you know, make that donation in the form of a match that you can use for Giving Tuesday. So be creative and flexible and thinking, how you can find somebody that gives you the opportunity to leverage this kind of additional support from your donors coming to your donation page on Giving Tuesday. So of course, whoever you do identify as your key prospects, take time to talk to them and learn about what it is they're looking for. A major donor may have a very different set of goals in making a donation to you as a corporate partner will. They're interested in different things. They're motivated by different things. So by starting this process early, you have the time to have a conversation with them before you ask. And then when you do ask, you can make sure that that ask is really informed by what is going to appeal to them. So a major donor may have no interest in their name being shared, whereas a corporate partner is almost always going to want their a company name, logo, website, et cetera, shared as a part of their donation. So again, taking the time to start now will, will allow you to let those conversations develop <clears throat> and you'll have time to secure that match ahead of the Giving Tuesday. There's lots of different things that you can do for a match um, to your campaign. You can have a one for you know dollar for dollar match that's probably the most common um, but you can also do a two to one match or a three to one match you can just match the first you know 50 donations that are made to your organization or you can match the first 25 dollars of everyone's gift to your uh, organization during giving tuesday there's lots of different things that you can do to make it fun for you, fun for your donors, and to help perhaps meet the needs of your matching donor and what they're interested in doing. So um, don't be intimidated by thinking that you need to secure $10,000 for your match to be meaningful. I've seen many matching grants at $500, $1,000, um, or you take a couple of smaller matches and you combine it all into one opportunity. So lots of things you can do there, and I cannot stress enough that this is a really, really important thing to consider for your campaign. And once you do secure a match on Mighty Cause, you can add that match to your donation page. And what that does is get your donors even more excited about donating against that match. So your donor doesn't have to pay their match through the platform but you get the benefit of promoting that match to your donors. Right before they're about to click that donate button, they see there's a match, they see their donation goes further, might encourage them to increase their gift size or share the campaign with somebody else that they think might be interested because of the value of that extra sense of urgency that your matching grant will give them. <clears throat> so of course, central to any fundraising campaign, is the communications plan that you have to get the word out. So think about all the different tools that you have at your disposal, all the different ways that your nonprofit talks to your donors. Where do your donors go to hear from you? Do they pay attention to emails? Do they read emails? Do you send a lot of emails? Do they really pay more attention to you on social media? Is that Instagram primarily or are you really 
um, have a stronger audience on Facebook? Do you use your website? Do a lot of people visit your website on a regular basis? Is direct mail maybe something you might wanna consider? So think about all the different channels that might be available to you. You don't have to do every single channel. It's important to go to where your donors will be. So if the majority of your donors are older and they respond better typically to direct mail than they do to email, then that's something you'll want to keep in mind as you prepare for your Giving Tuesday campaign. Maybe you send a postcard alongside any of the other digital strategies that you do or a more standard mailer. Um, and all of that can really direct people to <clears throat> giving in multiple ways. They can write a check to your organization, of course, but in all of these different sources, you can also share a link to your Mighty Cause donation page and they can very quickly make their support. When it comes to your communication strategy, email, social media, direct mail, whatever method you might be using, try to keep yourself focused on a simple, consistent message. Um, I can't tell you how many emails I see from nonprofits or mailers that I see from nonprofits that are really long and they share tons of information, lots of great detail, all of that is great, but the average donor to your organization doesn't need all of that information. Maybe some of it goes over their head because they don't spend all day in your programming like you do. Um, they just need a short but sweet message that gets them excited to make their donation. So. Think about that as you're drafting your copy. How can you make your message as simple as possible? And then keep that consistent across all of your channels so that somebody doesn't see you asking, you know, for a donation to fund a new building on social media, but then your email campaign is promoting your after school program or whatever it might be. Keep it consistent. That way donors seeing you in multiple places will get that constant reinforcement of what you're really raising funds for with this campaign. Of course, planning and scheduling ahead allows you to <clears throat> make sure that you have a comprehensive campaign, you send as many emails as you want, <clears throat> but it also will give you more opportunity in the days before and on Giving Tuesday to be more um, able to adjust and adapt your strategy if you'd like. If you already have a few emails canned and set and ready to go and all you have to do is press go, it will give you some time and space on Giving Tuesday to say, hey, we're, you know, we're doing not quite as well as we thought, let's add an extra email to this set of donors and make sure that they're aware. Giving you some space to add on rather than feel like, you know, the whole day of Giving Tuesday, you're kind of scrambling to just get the next thing out, get the next thing out. Um, the last thing to keep in mind as you're in this early stage of planning what your communications plan will look like, think about segmentation. And this can feel daunting if you're a small organization um, or perhaps you don't have a ton of really great uh, tracking and donor management tools, but you should have a couple of options available to you for fairly easy segmentation of your donor list. Um, looking at who hasn't yet made a donation to your organization this year, who gave specifically on Giving Tuesday last year, that group of course deserves uh, a special set of communications. We talked a little bit about donor retention earlier on in this webinar. And I'm sure it won't surprise any of you to know uh, that donor retention really across the nonprofit sector is shockingly and really disappointingly low. But that means there's lots of room for improvement. So if you have a concerted effort built into your campaign to retain last year's Giving Tuesday donors, you're much more likely to improve that and retaining a donor costs much less is much easier than acquiring a new donor. So it absolutely is worth the time and energy to put a focus into your campaign on that group of donors in particular. But aside from that, you'll have 
perhaps recurring donors, volunteers to your programming, your board members, people that have maybe been served by your programming in the past, alumni. Um, these are all different kinds of groups. And you don't have to have separate email campaign and strategy for all of them, but think about just a few key segments and prioritize slightly adjusting your messaging so that your donors don't feel that, you know, you're just sending a message out into the universe, but they feel like you're talking to them. You're acknowledging that they have already made a gift this year or that they give to you on a regular basis because they're a recurring donor. And by acknowledging that and still involving them, you're much more likely to see a higher return on those emails. So we've mentioned your board a few times so far. Again, this is a resource that every nonprofit should have access to. Your board is there to support your organization. And one of the key roles of almost every board member is to be an advocate for your cause and to help you raise funds. So Giving Tuesday is a really great opportunity for you to let them do both of those. So <clears throat> board members, like many other volunteers, they've got a lot going on, they've got a full-time job, they have other commitments. You need to make it really easy for them to be involved, really easy for them to show their support. So give them structured, specific roles. We've already talked about the idea of giving a match donation. Talk to them about setting a goal for the number of their personal contacts that they will ask to make a donation for Giving Tuesday. Maybe they want to help host an event to um, correspond with the campaign that you're running. Or maybe they're just going to get involved in supporting your executive director or development director in talking with some of your major donor prospects, corporate partners, etc. But just like we talked about with your regular set of donors, by come December, they only have a month left, maybe not even a full month left, to meet their goals for the year. Now, unlike an average donor, hopefully or maybe your, your board members have had to set specific goals for how they want to support your event during the year, whether it's an amount that they need to give to your organization, an amount they need to help bring in, uh, or other types of goals. That gives you a structured commitment that you can look at and say, hey, let's work together to find out how you can meet your commitments and help us reach our Gaming Tuesday goals at the same time. <clears throat> so major donors are another uh, great audience to consider with your Giving Tuesday campaign. So, <clears throat> Just like you would, you know, on another campaign, Giving Tuesday is a great opportunity to try and convert some of those donors. So those prospects that you've been talking to for a while, it's a really focused effort that they can commit to. It's a great time of the year where major donors might be thinking about committing to any of the uh, gifts that they've been thinking about before the year ends. So take a look at your list of major donors that give on an annual basis. And for those that haven't made their donation before Giving Tuesday, make some special plans for how you are going to connect with them. Obviously, major donors are going to ideally need and want a more personal touch, a more targeted ask than perhaps somebody who made a smaller donation last year. So take time to make the plans for how you're going to approach uh, and ask those major donors. Whether you're asking them for a matching grant like we've talked about before, or even just asking them to increase their gift amount from what they gave last year. It's important with all of your donors, but major donors in particular, plan a meaningful thank you. Giving Tuesday is December 3rd and Right after Giving Tuesday, things may just get a little crazier through the end of the year. You've got lots of things going on. You've got lots of campaigns going on. You don't want to let 
too much time pass before you have a really meaningful thank you interaction, most especially with your major donors, though really with all of your Giving Tuesday donors. So if you take the time now to think about what you want that thank you experience to look like, then you'll be able to more effectively just implement that along with all the other things that you've got going on in that December timeframe. <clears throat> so peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is something that we talk about a lot here at Mighty Cause, and there is a reason that we do it. It is one of the most surefire ways that you can increase giving to your nonprofit for this campaign. Um, in the last year or two, Facebook has uh, really stepped up their efforts of asking your donors and supporters to fundraise for your organization. So if Facebook is asking your donors, you should be asking them too. They're much more likely to respond positively to you than they are to Facebook. And don't be scared to ask because as we've seen from the trends in Facebook fundraising, donors, supporters are willing to do it. It's a, it's a new way for them to get involved, especially maybe some of your younger donors that may not have as much personal wealth to give away, but they care about organizations, they wanna be involved. It's a new way to let your supporters engage with you. And it's a great time of year to take advantage of it. It's the time of year when people are thinking about giving, they're thinking about being generous, they're thinking about all the wonderful things they have in their life as they spend time with family and friends around the holiday season. So it gives them an outlet to channel any, any kind of feelings of generosity that they might be having to your organization. And on Mighty Cause, we have lots of tools that make it really easy to try peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. You can create a team campaign, which kind of brings all of your fundraisers together. You can create a template page for them that makes it super easy for them to have their page built and ready to share. You can both, you can either create a friendly sense of competition if that's something that feels meaningful to your organization or the supporters that are involved, or you can use it kind of the other way. And instead of competing and pitting your supporters against each other to raise the most funds, you can use it as a way to bring them together. Where as an individual who's never fundraised before might be a little intimidated, they might not be so sure. If they're doing it with a group of other people, it might feel like less overwhelming for them. So think about ways that you can take advantage of tools like our team fundraising and event fundraising tools to make it super easy for your fundraisers. And along with that, providing tools and resources to help them with the outreach. Unlike you, many of the people that do become a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for you, they don't do fundraising as their day job. Even though it may be only one of your day jobs, at least it's something that you do in a professional capacity. They may never have done it before. They may have never asked their friends and family for money in this way before. So providing some tools for them, even something as simple as a sample email that they can copy and paste and send to their contacts can go a really long way in one, making it feel less overwhelming for them, but two, giving them the opportunity to spread the word to more contacts because they don't have to take the time to think through, how should I write an email where I ask about this? Or how should I explain the work that this organization does? They can really keep it focused on pressing send, copy and paste, press send, copy and paste, press publish on your Facebook page, et cetera. So um, I really can't encourage you enough if you haven't taken advantage of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising before, you've maybe tried it in limited ways, Giving Tuesday is a great time to really jump further into that strategy. <clears throat> of course, as I've already mentioned, Giving Tuesday is the unofficial, official kickoff to end of year giving, the most important time of the year for many nonprofits in their fundraising plans. So, Take the time to think now of how 
you are going to integrate your Giving Tuesday campaign with your end of year campaign so that it doesn't feel like on December 4th, all of a sudden you're clamoring to get some things together and your end of year campaign doesn't really feel connected with your Giving Tuesday campaign. And you can do it in a number of ways. You can either share the same focus and just have a, a fun, new, fresh way to talk about that focus, or you can have a new effort altogether. But by planning it now, you can make sure that those efforts supplement each other. They maybe work together to hit the key message that, you're, that your nonprofit is looking to hit in general about the work that you do or your role in the community, etc. But again, taking the time now will help to make sure that those two campaigns make sense together and they build off of each other. And perhaps most importantly, that you have special plans in place for those people that do make a donation on Giving Tuesday. How are you going to talk to them for the rest of the year? Ideally, you won't just drop them in your email list and have them get the exact same communications that everyone else does during your, giving, your end of year campaign. But you'll want to take the time to recognize their Giving Tuesday support, maybe make them aware of what you're doing for end of year giving, maybe ask them to help spread the word about your end of year campaign, or maybe you do ask them to come back and give again. But if you're going to ask them to come back and make a donation, you're going to want to recognize that you know they've already made a donation earlier that month. So take the time now to think about what your plan is there and how you can really both appropriately thank those Giving Tuesday donors and work them into your end of year communications. We have mentioned the, the concept of the thank you a few times throughout. Um, and again, it's important to just take the time to plan ahead how you want to say thank you so that you don't forget to make it a priority. Of course, donors will get when they donate on the Mighty Cause platform and hopefully maybe in any of the other tools that you might be using, an automated tax receipt or email receipt does typically go out. So you're not looking at the thank you so much as check the box that they've received their tax receipt, but really more, how can I make this a meaningful donor interaction? It is that first step in stewardship after they've made a donation, whether they're a first time donor or whether they've been giving to you for many years. That thank you is really important. This is a really great place to think about incorporating a video. Um, and we'll see in just a moment uh, a campaign from last year that created a really great thank you video for their donors. And it was an 11 second video. Didn't take a lot of time for them to put together. It wasn't this whole big production, but it was just enough to share something meaningful in a new format for their donors. Think about who might need personal follow-up. What's that threshold of giving level? <clears throat> that requires or, you know, is something that makes you, your executive director, your board members, et cetera, do some personal follow-up. Make sure to share the impact. Um, this is something that many organizations either forget to do or don't, don't maybe realize the importance of this. When donors make a donation to you, they want to know how you're going to use that money, of course. <clears throat> and you may tell them right away, but that doesn't mean that it's not even more important to tell them two or three months down the road when you've actually put that money to use. You've spent it, you've gotten the program running, you hosted the training you said you were going to, you bought the thing you said you were going, going to, you distributed supplies in the way you said you were going to. It's a great additional touch point with those donors, and it's a way to reinforce to them that you use the money like you said you were going to, and it made the impact that you said it would, and that will make them more likely to come back and give again. So the final uh, step here is a pretty easy one, just getting started today. You made a great first step by coming to this webinar, signing up for it. Um, keep going by 
starting to get your plans in place. Some of you may have seen it by now, um, but I did upload a planning checklist to uh, the GoToWebinar control panel that you'll have on the side of your screen. So you should be able to download that. I will also send that in follow-up from this um, webinar, but hopefully that's another tool that you can use to jump into the planning process. <clears throat> in case that is not enough, I wanted to just go over a couple of key campaigns that we saw be successful last year in the Mighty Cause platform to help give you some inspiration. Think about what you might do for your campaign to make it fun, interesting, engaging this year. So the first is Bronx Lacrosse. <clears throat> they, just like the name suggests, organization uh, supporting <clears throat> lacrosse, the growth of lacrosse, working with youth in the Bronx area. And so they came up with their Bronx Lacrosse 25 challenge for last year's Giving Tuesday campaign. And their goal was to get 250 donors to give $25, which was the cost of a new stick, and ask three friends to do the same. And when I say that this was their goal, I don't just mean that they sat down in a meeting and talked about how this would be the way to make their campaign successful. They communicated this goal in exactly this way across every single social media post. This was their key message. Give $25. They made sure to make people understand that that $25 is what the cost of a new lacrosse stick is to give that context for people. And in every post, they asked that donor, you know, give 25 and ask three friends to do the same. That was their approach to kind of peer-to-peer -peer engagement, is get every single person that supports us to help us spread the word. On top of that, they had a dollar for dollar matching grant and a strong campaign video that really helped to kind of round out their key message. They raised over $35,000 by donors online. So that on top of the 35,000 plus in matching funds that they secured made for an incredibly successful campaign. Nearly 450 donors total gave to them. So again, it wasn't just that this was their goal. They really made that the central message that they hit time and again. Another one here is Casita Copan. So I already mentioned this one briefly and their, um, their fun 11 second thank you video. Uh, that's your inspiration not to be overwhelmed by video, but to just think about how video is, is feasible for you. Maybe very short, maybe using a free tool like Animoto or something like that. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to have video editing skills and you can put something together that's just kind of fun and different format than image and text, image and text. <clears throat> so this organization, their goal was to raise $15,000 to open a new foster home. They had three and they were trying to open a fourth location. So what they did throughout the 24 hours of Giving Tuesday was they shared how-to videos from their kids all day long. That gave them lots of content to share, lots to talk about during the day. And it was a great way to connect their supporters to the children that they're actually supporting and to kind of give them a, a glimpse into the life that these children lead, the things that they do. Learning Spanish, making tortillas, keeping the chickens. They're kind of fun things to share, interesting for the donors to see but also a nice window into how, how their support makes a difference for these kids, helping to get to know these kids that their support uh, is going toward. And in every single post when they shared a video, they also included the link to donate and a clear ask to make a donation. Uh, we talked about matching grants, of course. Um, this is a group that made use of multiple small matching grants throughout the day on Giving Tuesday, and they had a bonus $500 match that they had available the day after Giving Tuesday. So their messaging there was, hey, in case you forgot, it's not too late. You can still make your donation. And by the way, 
we've got a $500 match available today. So that's kind of a fun way to think about it. Yes, Giving Tuesday is 24 hours, but the goal is just to get people giving, to get people excited about giving. For many organizations, that giving will hopefully continue from Giving Tuesday all the way through the end of year. So having a match available the day after Giving Tuesday, for example, is a nice way to keep that excitement going, keep the momentum going. And our last uh, inspiration here is the Environmental Educators of North Carolina. They focused their campaign on a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. And this campaign kicked off on Giving Tuesday and lasted all the way through the end of the year. So they gave their peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers a full month to do their fundraising. They had 16 fundraisers sign on to their campaign, the majority of which were board members, and every single one of them raised money. Some raised more than others, but not one of them had zero dollars raised. <clears throat> they created a fundraiser template for these 16 participants. They added <clears throat> images and messaging into that fundraiser template that made it really easy for these fundraisers to share why they were doing this uh, campaign, why they were raising funds. And that made it so that it was really easy for these fundraisers if they wanted to personalize it, all they really had to do was upload a photo of themselves or maybe add in a little extra text on their page to explain their personal experience with this organization or their personal connection to this cause. They did something really fun in which all of the board members agreed that the board members that met their fundraising goal as a part of this campaign would come together and do a flash mob and they would have somebody film it so that they could send the video to their donors for proof. That was a really fun way for these board members to get their donors to get excited about giving and hold them accountable. Of course, you're getting your family and friends to donate. So which one of, you know, who of them does not want to see a video of you making a fool of yourself doing the flash mom? So I thought that was kind of a fun, fun idea and something I have not seen before on a peer-to-peer -peer campaign. Creative incentive there. And all together, they raised over $36,000 from 187 donors. It was a great success for them. <clears throat> so now, right before we sign off, just a few things to keep in mind. Of course, the dates that you'll wanna save today, when you get off today's webinar, you can go ahead and register for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause. There's a short registration form. Give us a little bit of information about your organization. And that's a great first step that you can take. On the Mighty Cause platform, we open up early giving for your Giving Tuesday campaign, Tuesday, November 19th. So that's exactly two weeks before Giving Tuesday. Great time to build some early momentum so that by Tuesday, December 3rd, when things kick off, your campaign is really off to the races. We have a few other training webinars scheduled in the next few months. The next one is August 20th, Giving Tuesday Tips for Small Nonprofits, as well as a few others you'll see here. We will also likely have at least one more being added, so stay tuned to uh, the Giving Tuesday Mighty Cause website for more information there, as well as all the resources that we have access, that we have provided access to in our nonprofit toolkit. And with that, um, we are just about close to the end of time here. I'll see if we've got any quick questions that I can answer for the group. And again, if I don't have a chance to answer your question now, I'll make sure that we do follow up and get you the information that you need. All right. Uh, great question here about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. I think this question might have come in before we got to um, that section of the webinar, but yes, absolutely, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is 
available. It's a great way to add to your um, Giving Tuesday campaign. Very easy for your supporters right from your page on Mighty Cause. They can click the fundraise button. It'll walk them through a few step process to create their account and set up their page and they're good to go. All the funds will come directly to your organization so they're not involved in handling any of the funds, but they get their own customized page that they can share with their family and friends. Uh, another question here on the guarantee that I mentioned right at the beginning of the webinar, the pricing guarantee that makes sure that you know you'll never pay more than you would on PayPal. <clears throat> so we'll happily uh, make sure that this information is available on the Giving Tuesday website on Mighty Cause so that you can refer to it. <clears throat> and we'll share information by email as well to all the organizations that sign up for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause. Um, but you can always learn about uh, Mighty Cause pricing on our website where we explain what the processing fees are and how we're able to provide that guarantee for you. So I encourage you to check out our website for that. Um, uh, one more question on peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. On these pages, who sets up the content and images? Is it the individual or the organization? And that's up to you. Um, for, for each organization, it can be a little different depending on who the individual is and how you're interested in supporting them. If you'd like, you can build a page for them and send them the link and they can just use that link and spread the word. In many cases, the individual will create the page themselves. That means that they can upload their own personal image, etc. cetera. Um, so it's really just depends on the needs of the individual um, and your interest in, in supporting them as an organization. Um, that's one of the reasons that that team, team product can be a really helpful tool if you do anticipate having multiple peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. By creating a team, you, as an organization, can create a page template for them, and then they, they have to do very little. In fact, they don't have to do anything to personalize or customize their page if they don't want to. So for those that just want to kind of get their page published and spread the word, they can do that in a few clicks. And then those that do want to customize it a little bit will have the opportunity to do so. Um, and then the last question here is about getting a copy of the presentation. We'll make sure that everybody who signed up gets a copy of the presentation mailed to them, a recording, as well as uh, the handout, um, the planning checklist that we had available during today's webinar. So all of that will be sent out um, after today's training. So um, with that, I will go ahead and let everyone get back to their day. Thanks for taking the time to be here with us today to get started thinking about and talking about Giving Tuesday. Uh, good luck with your campaign, and we are excited to be here to help you as we move towards December. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.